everybody, and welcome to a very special episode of Movies and Matthew Live. I'm Matthew, all right. I'm Matthew Hoffman, guys, and uh, I know that you guys are in the comment section right now, and you are probably wondering, Matthew, why is there a piano in the studio, and who is this handsome stranger next to you? Well, movie fans, we are talking all things La La Land, a movie we have been discussing for weeks here on this show. I am so excited. It is one of my favorite films of the year. La La Land is an epic love story about an aspiring actress who falls in love with a jazz pianist in Los Angeles. It stars Ryan Gosling, Emma Stone, and this film modernizes the movie musical and has been picking up major recognition in the process. We are so lucky to have with us today the movie's composer, Justin Hurwitz, who, who wrote the film's original score and has been nominated for two Golden Globes for Best Original Score and Best Original Song. He also just casually picked up a Critics' Choice Award for Best Song and Best Score. And La La Land, fun fact, before this film made it to the big screen, Justin composed over 1,900 piano demos for this film film here with us today. Please give a warm welcome in the comments section to this genius, Justin Hurwitz. Thank you so hey. much for being with Thank us. Thank you for having me. This is an honor. We talked off camera mm -hmm. and I'm like so excited. You guys, I'm actually out of my body right now. <laughs> I don't even know what's happening. I, I had the crew say, this is not a dream, right? Like this is, this is real. And after 1900 mm -hmm. piano demos, did you ever think that you would be here? And by here, I don't mean on this little show because you'd be a masochist, but, uh, but like, is the success, has it sunk in yet? Uh, it's sinking in. Uh, I don't know if I ever knew I was going to be here just because we didn't know if the movie was even going to get made. Yeah. Um, it was a few years of just working on Damien writing the script, me writing music, and just pushing it forward, but never, nobody wanted to make it. So right. and then you made Whiplash. Yeah. And the success of that film gave the permission to kind of... Exactly. Yeah. We had to put La La Land down for a little bit because it just we couldn't get it made. So we made Whiplash, and then we are at Sundance with Whiplash, and everybody wanted to know what's next, what's Damien's next movie. Yeah. And we had it you know, ready like, to go. Actually, you guys, <laughs> actually. it's right here. Uh, I cannot say enough good things about this movie. I think it is so refreshing. It's, it's unbelievable. The music is so beautiful. And since we have this gorgeous uh, piano here. It would be a crime not to use it. So um, I want to ask you about a couple songs in this movie. Sure. Um, and maybe we can talk through them and, and obviously hear you play them. Um, and I, I was thinking, like, well, how do I start this interview with you? And mm -hmm. I think that to acknowledge this, this masterwork, I think, that La La Land is, you have to talk about the first opening scene. Mm -hmm. And for you guys who have not seen the movie yet, run. And um, if, when you do see it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But the very first scene in this movie uh, is uh, you guys shut down the 110 freeway in mm -hmm. Los Angeles, uh, and you did a single take for mm -hmm. six minutes. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about that process? And for those of you who guys don't know what the 110 is, uh, I think we can agree, Justin, that it's hell on earth. <laughs> uh, it's the biggest uh, uh, artery kind of in the city mm -hmm. to get around in Los Angeles. Yeah. And what you guys did in this opening is unbelievable. Can you talk a little bit about that and the song uh, yeah. that, that's in the, the opening? Yeah, well, like, like you say, it was a huge undertaking. It, it's, it was, we shut down this freeway for a weekend and it was two days. Um, actually, it's three shots that are all stitched together kind of seamlessly so you don't see the stitches. Right. And over the course of the two days, it was just many, many, many takes of these very complicated uh, either steady cam or crane shots um, following, following the dance, following the action, and it was all highly choreographed, not just from the dancer choreography perspective, but the camera was so choreographed because it had to catch this piece of dance and that piece of dance, and we had playback, we had the song blasting, and we had the, you know, the, the people on screen also had to be catching all the background vocals and the lead vocals, and we would divide up who was singing lead, who was singing background, where they'd cross the camera and all that, so. And the song is called? Another Day of Sun. Yep, and which perfectly uh, encompasses, in my opinion, what LA is like physically and also to live here. Um, can mm -hmm. we hear a little bit of that? Sure. Um, so the song, it's, there's kind of this sort of sound design thing that leads into the song right. where the camera comes down and it comes through the cars and you hear all these radios playing different kinds of music, playing whatever people are listening to in their cars and then out of this sort of cacophony of, of traffic radios, the, the riff, the opening riff of the song starts to emerge and gets louder and louder and it's this sort of, you know... So 
it's it's this it's this riff that's supposed to kind of catch your ear yeah. and sort of give the the momentum of the song and give kind of the feel of the song, and then yeah, this uh, the the first singer you see is in her car and she starts she starts humming the same you know. <laughs> She starts. She starts humming the riff, and then she, and then after, and then she sort of slips into song and starts singing the, her verse, which, it, you, you know, her verse and all the other verses are from these people who, they, they get out of their cars and start singing about their lives, basically. Yeah. And it's basically like the dream traffic musical. Like when you're in your car and you're like, "Oh, get me out of here!" Yeah. The, every single car just explodes with dance and song. It's yeah, song and dance, and you're introduced to all these characters who you actually never see again in the movie. They're just there to sort of set the world and to say, first of all, this is a musical. People are going to be singing and dancing in this movie. And also to give us some sort of theme and thematics about the movie, which is these are all dreamers. These are people who have come to L.A. to make it as singers, dancers, writers, poets, whatever. And none of them are really doing what they want to be doing yet. So it's yeah. this very exciting city, but it can be a frustrating Depressing city. And, yeah. yeah. And then when, what you just played, can we hear a little bit more of that? And then also, like, how long does something like that take you to write? Which I, I assume is a, is a, a yeah. rude question almost. But, um, a long, like, long time. Yeah, a long, a long time, time, right? Yeah. Um, how, it was, I don't remember how many demos. It was many, many demos. Uh, basically, I do, I get an, I work at the piano until I have an idea that I think is really good, and then I record it, and I send it to Damien, and he says, no, yeah. not, not right. You're like, I spent and 11 then, hours on that. And then, yeah, and then I move on to the next idea and the next idea, and I just keep going until, until there's something that just feels right to him and to me, and as soon as something excites him, then you know, I recognize immediately like that is better than anything yeah. I've done so far. And like along the way, I have some very bad ideas, and I have some good but not good enough ideas, but usually when when I come to that one melody, um, and there are a bunch of key melodies in this movie that all took a very long time, um, it's, it's very apparent that yeah. we kind of found it. Can we hear a little bit of the, the opening? Yeah, so the melody is, it's, um, it's faster than this. Yeah. Basically, the first part, you know, it's it's it, this is the part where they're singing about their lives, you know, what they what they came to LA to do, and yeah. it has this sort of it's 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 it, it's technically in a major key, but it keeps going back and forth between a major and a minor because it's 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 again, like I said, a hopeful song, but it has some melancholy to it. Right. And every time we land, every time we land on a major chord, I always I won't get too technical, but I. I I give it what's called a major seventh. So it's instead of landing, instead of landing like two major, I go. It's, I knew the difference. You, you put this, you put this dissonance in yeah. because it kind of, I don't know, it gives it's it a little more. Happy. It's not too happy. It cuts the happiness yeah. a little bit. So I always do that whenever I land in a major. Well, this, this town can cut happiness like no other town. Just so everybody uh, yeah. is, is with us. Now you're amazing. And I'm sure that everyone in the comment section, and you're getting many thumbs up right now, but yeah. just because this is one-on-one -on -one and we're not seeing anybody, yeah. I wanted uh, to, you to feel appreciated while you mm. play. And I know what I'm about to do is wildly beneath you, but uh -huh. if I didn't, like, I would never forgive myself. So give me one <laughs> second, okay? There's a little tip jar for you, Golden Globe nominee Justin. I'm just going to put this in here, okay? Just a little dolly. You were fantastic. Thank we'll you. Keep it, keep okay. it going. We have a couple more songs. Okay. Um, now, one other song uh, that is in the movie that is so beautiful. Uh, it's a lovely night. Yeah. Um, and that is with uh, yeah. uh, Ryan and Emma. And it's a, it, it basically, it's like their first meeting, I yeah. guess. And yeah. it's about how they're going to fall in love, but they're also resisting it. Yeah. Uh, can you talk to me about that song and, and play a little bit of that? Yeah. So basically, the, the, the song starts as they're walking up this hill. And they're kind of flirting a little bit, getting to know each other. And they come upon this gorgeous sunset. Yeah. And um, 
the, the idea of the song is, isn't this a romantic, this is such a romantic scene, this is such a romantic moment we're having, but we're not right for each other. So um, the music kind of swells up. And then Ryan starts singing. And the melody, I made it kind of, because, because it's sort of prickly what he's saying. He's yeah. saying it's such a lovely. It's this is such a lovely night, but I I don't like you and you don't like me. Yeah. It's kind of it's it's you know. It's it's kind of it's 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 a little prickly. It's a little angular. It's a little right. dissonant. You know. Um. So it it kind of has these. It has these kind of it has these sort of weird intervals and these dissonances in it because it's don't want it to feel too romantic yet. Want right. it to still feel a little um, you know they're kind of they're 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 flirting with each other but they're not in like quite in love yet. Right. So you know the and then once we get to the chorus, uh, that's where it gets a little more romantic. Yeah. Changes keys for for Emma's key because yeah. that was actually something we had to figure out with them in pre-production because when you're doing a, a duet, it's really hard to find a key that works for both of them because right. you you know whatever key and works. Ryan has a very low voice. Ryan has a very low yeah. voice and he wanted to sing you know, song, you know, song yeah. as, as low as he possibly He's could. Like, hey ladies, I'm like okay, which wow. which works really well for his voice because it sounds you know kind of like authentic and grounded. Yeah. And I think if he I think he he felt when he sings too high it would sound a little too operatic. He wanted to feel, and as as we did as well, it to sound almost like an extension of his dialogue. Yeah. And you kind of talk and at the bottom of both of them. That's your, what I wanted to talk to you too about. Yeah. It's like movie musicals. I think um, you know people have their perceptions. Yeah. And this, to me, when I saw it, I was so surprised how modern it was, mm -hmm. and how literally everyone is genuinely speaking on tone. Yeah. It's like you're like, oh, that's exactly what Emma Stone would sound like. Right. Like she's just like talking right. to you, and there happens to be the most gorgeous orchestrations under her. <laughs> Thank but you. But it's it's not your token like we're here, exactly. LA. It's, and I wonder, with obviously that was very deliberate uh, yeah. choice, but yeah. there's something so new about it to yeah. an art form that is so. Old. Yeah. Did you guys discuss that? Absolutely. That's a huge part of the concept. Is we never wanted. We didn't want to do the kind of musical where you feel the musical number turn on, and so this. This. I mean, some of the challenges are technical. Just how do you record the vocals and mix the vocals so that well, you can get from dialogue into song without feeling the studio vocal turn on right. if it's a pre-recorded song. Yeah. Also, a couple of the big songs in the movie, "Audition," "The Fools Who Dream," and "City of Stars" duet. Those were recorded live on set. Right. So we can talk about those in a minute. But from a technical standpoint, we wanted. Sonically, the dialogue to bridge seamlessly to the to the song vocals. I got a time out. You say you've said two words today that I'm like, what? You said concophony, concophony. Cacophony. Thank you. And then sonically, who are you? You're like a genius. <laughs> this man, I can't go on. I'm sorry. Um, but uh, so when you when you made that choice, like. Uh -huh. I guess that kind of, um, yeah. and forgive me for uh, not being as technical, but I, I feel like that, you know, it drives the story as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, it, I, to get away from the technical part of it, so much of it too is the writing and how, you know, Damien wrote those scenes that segue into the singing and how, you know, and then he worked with Emma and Ryan yeah. on sort of figuring out, you know, I think there was some improv and some workshopping of the script and also how do you get sort of seamlessly what is and also by the way this some of the dialogue reflected what the you know what the first lines of the song were so as our lyricist Pasek and Paul Benj Pasek and Justin Paul wrote the words wrote the lyrics to the songs that informed Damien went back and then you know sort of tweaked the script leading into it and worked with Emma and Ryan leading into it so that it could all kind of flow together 
Um, speaking of Pasek and Paul, mm -hmm. uh, one of the next songs that I wanted to talk to you about, and I'm sure everyone who is watching now who has seen uh, La La Land at our Regal Cinemas, uh, <laughs> has, um, has left the theater humming this next song, which mm -hmm. is City of Stars. Mm -hmm. And it is so hauntingly beautiful mm -hmm. and so simple. Mm -hmm. Like it's just, it's so, it's so beautiful. And for weeks now, I've had it in my head as have many of my friends. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that because you'd mentioned Pasek and Paul. Yeah. And from what I heard, and correct me if I'm wrong, that this song uh, was kind of one that you were using, you had written yeah. to court songwriters. Mm -hmm. And you had handed it to yeah. them. Do you want to tell the story? At yeah, all? so, um, you know, all the songs uh, started, well, I'd been working with Damien for a while on just finding the, the music of it, the melodies and the, the, the themes. And this was one that I had, it took me a very long time, like all of them, but I had cracked musically and we had sort of structured it into a song. So we had a piano demo of the song, but there were no words. Right. So this was around the time that we were starting to talk with or meet with uh, lyricists. Um, to you know, to get those to get those w lyrics written, and we talked to Pasek and Paul, who live in New York, and they came to L.A. And before they came, they had been working on a lyric for this piano demo. And the piano demo had you know all the it was. Uh, The music was there, but no words. So it was their job to, you know, fill it in. What are those words? What is the lyrical hook? Now, or, for of it? you, did you have an idea of what you wanted, or because it, it's so interesting to me yeah. that you write the music first yeah. and then, as opposed to the words and then the music. Yeah. So did you kind of know where you wanted it to go? Not or? the words of it. Like thematically, we knew what it had to be because yeah. even when I was just composing the music. Damien's script gave you know a lot of indications to sort of emotionally what it, this had to be and what the sh shape of the scene would be in the case of the song, um, and so yeah we knew it was it was a song about we knew sort of where it was in the movie and what it was about and story wise what was going on and right. what was going on with the characters but none of those words city of stars are you shining none of those words existed yeah. until Pasek and Paul came to L A we had dinner um, had a great time at dinner. They came over to my apartment the next day, and we sat around the piano. And we said, "So, what do you guys think? What are you guys thinking for it?" And they sang pretty much exactly the lyrics that are there. I can't sing, but you know, "City of Stars," just for me. Yeah, and um, they sang it, and Damien and I. It was like a revelation because we. It just felt so right. Like we yeah. knew that was the song, and these are the guys who should be writing all the lyrics in the movie. And done. It was a done deal. Yeah, it was a done deal. Wow. That's so, crazy. And then how, how long after this original song did then you, you hand over the rest of your work that you've been doing and then they, how long did that process take? I think pretty much immediately because this song was basically done when yeah. they came over to my apartment like to, you know, to show that, that song, they tweaked the lyrics a little bit like really late in the process, but that song was basically done. So yeah, I think we handed them either um, Another Day of Sun or a lovely, Night next. I know audition was the last one. Yeah, they worked on. You were setting me up so well because that's a song I really want to talk to you about because um, I heard two things about audition, mm -hmm. which is this um, for everybody watching now. Uh, it's this this unbelievable uh, showstopper, mm -hmm. if you will. You will. Okay, cool. Uh, it's, <laughs> this, um, it's this great number uh, that Emma Stone sings, yeah. and it's basically an audition, and then it goes yeah. into a larger story. But I heard two things, and correct me if mm -hmm. I'm wrong about this, this folklore. Uh, one, uh, it was recorded live mm -hmm. in the movie. So yep. everything that you guys will see at Regal with, uh, with this, uh, this soundtrack when you hear it was recorded live, one shot, one yep. take. One shot. And then the other thing I heard was that this is your favorite song <laughs> in the movie. Is that true? Yeah, it's, it's really hard to pick a favorite. I love City of Stars too. I love all of them. But um, this one I'm particularly proud of as a composer and as an orchestrator. I felt like, I just felt really inspired as, as, as I was doing it. And... Um, yeah, I really love it, and Emma brings, you know, just brings it to life, and is so gives such an unbelievably powerful performance that, as a scene, it just yeah. blows me away every and time I, I see like it. And I feel like just I, I tried to simplify what this was about without giving any spoilers. But would you mind just talking about what this song kind of is and sure. the meaning behind it, and then if we could hear a little bit? Sure. So Emma's character Mia is an aspiring actress, and she's kind of been put through the ringer in LA. She's been to so many soul-crushing auditions. And uh, she's at, at one point she gives up on acting. She's just she's had enough, and she's convinced to come back for one more audition. And she comes in 
to this audition and she meets with the, the, it's the film's director and the casting director and say, you know, just tell us a story. And she starts talking about an aunt of hers who was also an actress, who inspired Mia to be an actress and who was an inspiration in the way that she never gave up on her dreams and never gave up on her art. So Emma, Emma's character Mia is talking about this aunt who lived in Paris and who was an actress and it just, it's, it goes from dialogue into song kind of it sort of slips into song and grows and grows more powerful and it becomes it, it goes from being very specific about this ant to being very broad and a, being about dreaming and dreamers and it and you know the refrain becomes here's to the ones who dream you know foolish as they may seem so it's about all of us it's yeah. about all of our all of us creative people and it it, it becomes somewhat anthemic in that way um, or I, I, yeah, or I hope it does, and I hope it speaks to people you know, who, have, who have all sorts of backgrounds. So it's actually a, a brilliant lyric by Pascal and Paul because the way that they're able to go from so specific about the ant into this broader, more anthemic lyric is, is you know, really impressive and such a beautiful lyric. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, can everyone who's watching now, can we hear a little bit of, of that? Sure. I wish I could sing. It's just going to be on piano, but... Um, I got you. Move over. No, I'm kidding. Don't, <laughs> yeah. don't you dare. Don't uh, you dare move over. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can show you sort of what it started as with the piano demo, yeah. which is, um, you know, she starts kind of a cappella. This is the chorus now, so this is, you know, here's to the ones who dream. And the chorus, you know, like other, like the other compositions we talked about, it kind of goes back and forth between major and minor because it's about hope, but it's about, you know, kind of defeat Reality. sometimes. So, you know, we, we first cadence in minor and then in, and then in major and then to minor. And we think we're gonna we think we're gonna go there, but we cadence in minor again, just to kind of almost take you by surprise. And then into the second verse. section where she she starts singing about it's a more abstract lyric about you know mag magic you need magic to be an artist and it's you know the 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 piano starts kind of doing this almost this kind of magical arpeggiating you know kind of build towards this very dramatic, you know, last chorus where I, I won't play the whole song, yeah. but um, yeah, and then, it, and then so the song builds towards a, you know, a real dramatic chorus and then it just kind of simmers down at the end, you know. And, um, and the outro is just very, very delicate. kind of let the, the music drop out and Emma says her, her last word kind of a cappella as we, as we sort of return to reality. Yeah, I'm gonna return to reality too. <laughs> I am like, I don't know if you guys can see me now, I'm like, oh my God, keep playing. <laughs> um, this is unbelievable. And um, you know, this film has, wait for this, struck a chord, I'm so sorry, <laughs> with audiences um, 
Thank you. Uh, with audiences, because it's so, it's so real, and not mm. that I have to sell this movie because it's, it sells itself, but I, you know, and the music is so beautiful, and I, I just wonder on a, a personal level mm. what you hope audiences take away from this gorgeous movie. Mm. Um, I hope they, I hope that they can love musicals if they don't already. It's one of my favorite, if not my favorite genre, and Damien and I were excited about making a new musical and making, you know, a musical where people just sing when they're moved and inspired, and it's, you know, it's in some ways an older style of musical in that way, so I, I hope people can appreciate that kind of musical and maybe go back and revisit some of those older great musicals. I hope maybe other musicals can get made for film. Um, so that's, that's, that would be one, one thing, and I also just think that people are, um, you know, connect with what the movie's about, which is which is being a dreamer and being creative and never giving up. Um, because you see these characters, you know, who want want something so badly, want to be something, um, and uh, you know, you kind of watch the ups and downs, and you watch them stick with their dreams, and uh, you know, s mostly fail, but you know, hopefully succeed in the end. And I hope that people can. Be you know I hope people can kind of take away the like the message from audition the fools who dream you know we're crazy we're crazy to be dreamers like this but this we have no choice this is what we're meant to do and we're going to stick with it and uh, you know believe in what we're doing so I hope people can connect with that message as well no matter what what field they're in yeah um, it's such a powerful film and um, I'm sure you're not uh, numb to the buzz that is uh, <laughs> around this movie and around you and you like I said in the, the top of the show you've you've taken home the critics choice mm. uh, you've been nominated for two globes everyone is talking Oscar that mm. has to affect <laughs> you I mean you have to hear that or where where are you in the in the realm of, of this crazy mm -hmm. award season and, and all of the recognition that this, this beautiful film is getting uh, yeah, it's very, it's very flattering. Yeah. Um, like I said, when we first started talking, we didn't even know if the movie was going to get made. So for it to get made in the first place, for it to come out well, which is, you know, not More all than well, everybody. <laughs> More than well. It's not perfect. You know, it's just to sort of stick with, stick with, you know, stick with our guns in some cases and just, like, really believe in what we were doing and, um, and, f you know, to see it through, to get it made, and then to have people respond this way is... Um, it's it's kind of wild, so yeah. I'm just trying to enjoy it. Yeah, um, you're heading to the Globes. Mm -hmm. Do you have a speech prepared? No. No. Okay. <laughs> um, I had to ask. It was like token, like <laughs> entertainment journalist, like one on one. <laughs> I had to. Um, now, um, is there any other song that you would like to play from this from this movie that we haven't that we haven't touched on? Song. Um, I mean, the main theme of the movie is something that is. Uh, you know, really special to me. It's again a composition that took me a very long time to find, and once I did it, we just it just felt so right. And it's very important to the movie. It's very emotionally important to the movie. Yeah. And um, it you know it goes. <laughs>
that's how it goes. Wow, um, I'm sure my <laughs> comment thread is going crazy right now, and all the thumbs up are in your general direction. Um, yeah. It has been such an honor to talk with you today. Mm. Um, I am genuinely such a fan of this film. I think it's so beautiful, and um, uh, for those of you who have not seen La La Land yet, run, dance, do whatever <laughs> you have to do, go see it. It is playing at Regal Cinemas um, this holiday season. It's, it's phenomenal, um, and I congratulations to you. You're so young, Thank you. you're so talented. Um, what's next? I don't know, I don't, I don't know what I'm gonna score next, actually. Yeah. Um, no, we were talking off camera that yeah. you're currently, do you mind? <laughs> uh, you're, yes, no? It, it, it's, I, I have this other thing I, yeah. You have a side gig, I have a side uh, which gig. I think is I, an understatement. I do, I do a little bit of writing when I'm not doing music, yeah. but I mean, music is really what's important to me and what uh, I feel like I should be doing with my life, so. I'm I'm excited to score another movie. I don't know what it's going to be yet, yeah. but do you have a bucket list of films that you? Not, f no. Um, or genre, I mean. No, not genre. Yeah. I mean, I want to. I think next I'll probably do something other than a musical. Yeah. Um, I don't want to just do musicals. I want to. You know, I think of myself as a film score composer. So I, I, you know, this movie has a score, obviously, but I want to do more movies that it's it's about the score and about sort of underpinning the drama and you know with with music, um, even if there aren't songs. So yeah, I imagine the next movie will just be, um, I don't know, maybe something dark. I'd like to do something dark, yeah. possibly. Well, speaking of dark, um, since we're friends now, yeah. right, we're like really close. Um, uh, I have these lights, I have this piano. Uh, security's like really far away right now and <laughs> lawyers are nowhere to be found. Movies and Matthew Live, we've been go, mm -hmm. we go every week. It's our show. Mm -hmm. We don't have a theme song, Golden Globe oh. nominee. Do you wanna like hit like three notes? Can we have like a, a little theme song? Uh... We're done, I'm out. It will never get better than this. Uh, I can now say that Golden Globe nominee Justin Hurwitz wrote our theme song to our ridiculous show that I am so thankful that we get to do and I am so honored that you would come and um, entertain us and all of the, uh, the movie fans who are watching right now on Regal's uh, Facebook page. Like I said, uh, La La Land is unbelievable and it is uh, at Regal Cinemas this holiday. It stars Ryan Gosling, Emma Stones. You, sir, are a dream. Mm. Congratulations. Thank you so much for um, having me. Thank you so much for coming on. Do you wanna, do you wanna play us out? Uh, I'll play the theme again. All Let's right. see if I can get it right this time. We will see you guys next year. Justin Hurwitz, La La Land.